We're going to go ahead and get started. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here, and welcome to the Safe Systems Symposium. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation and the Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization, we want to thank you so much for being here today. My name is Abby Hemingway, and I'm the Public Involvement Officer for the Space Coast TPO, and I'll be your MC for the program today. So before we begin, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items, as always. Uh, your agenda should be at your seat. If you don't have one, please see our staff in the back. Uh, restrooms are located in the lobby all the way near the entrance, as is a refillable water bottle station. Please make sure you use those if you have bottles today. It just you know, stays on plastic. Exits are located in the back of the room. If you have an emergency or any medical assistance, please see Laura Carter. Laura, raise your hand. She's all the way in the back. She'll be your 911 call designee. And throughout the course of the program, you'll notice that we have a few breaks today, including a uh, working and networking lunch. So if you need assistance ordering lunch, so you see Stephanie Moss here. She's in the front of the room. And at the end of each speaker presentation, there'll be a short time frame for questions. And then near the end of the program, we'll actually have a full Q&A session for the day. And lastly, please, please silence your cell phones. So if you're on social media today and take any photos or videos, please tag us on Facebook or Twitter. These are the accounts for both the Space Coast TPO and Florida Department of Transportation District 5. And we're using the hashtag 321 Safe System Symposium. We'll also be taking photos throughout the sessions and during the breaks too. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce the Executive Director of the Space Coast TPO, Georgiana Gillette. In her role, Georgiana oversees regional transportation planning for Brevard County's 16 incorporated municipalities and has the unique opportunity to collaborate and coordinate five transportation modes unique to Brevard County, highways, airports, rail, a seaport, and a spaceport. As executive director, Georgiana works closely with local governments, state and federal transportation partners, and communities to meet the needs of our shared transportation system. The Space Coast TPO serves as a forum for building consensus and facilitating discussions on how to best prioritize transportation dollars in our county. Georgiana has assumed her position at the Space Coast TPO in August of 2010. Prior to this, she held positions with the Florida Department of Transportation in Orlando and Lake City for over 18 years. Throughout her 29 years of experience in the transportation industry, Georgiana has continued to establish professional relationships with transportation leaders throughout the region and state. Please join me in welcoming Georgiana to the podium. Thank you so much, Abby. Well, welcome everyone. I, I look around the room and I tell you I am just so excited to see so many people here from so many different agencies. Um, I want to thank our DOT partners, um, Secretary Perdue with uh, DOT District 5, Lorraine Bobo, the new safety administrator. Um, they have been excellent partners in transportation and I look around the room and I see a lot of other DOT staff as well. That is so important for what we need to do as an organization. Um, I also see uh, several of our elected officials. Um, I see Vice Mayor, the chair of the TPO Governing Board, Vice Mayor Andrea Young. And I also see uh, the Cocoa City Council member, Lorraine Koss, um, and the Cape Canaveral City Council, uh, Don Willis, Mr. Don Willis back there. Have I missed any of our elected officials in the room? Thank you so much for being here and representing the TPO Governing Board. We also have uh, technical advisory committee members as well as citizen advisory committee members and that shows the dedication for what the TPO is trying to do to improve safety. Um, and we also have some of our regional partners here, staff from some of the Central Florida MPOs uh, in the region. Eliminating traffic-related serious injuries and fatalities on our roadway will take everyone. So that's why it is so important that we have so many different agencies here. To accomplish this goal, we need a shared understanding to create this positive safety culture. Roadway safety is a shared responsibility. The picture behind me is from the 2021 World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims. We held this event at the Brevard Government Center. The 400 luminaries around the reflecting pond represent the number of traffic fatalities in Brevard County between 2016 through 2020. These people were not statistics. 
They were family members and they were friends. We honor their memory and we work to prevent future human loss. So again, I just wanna thank you very much for being here and let's get this show started. Thank you so much, Georgina. This morning we'll be uh, continue to hear from distinguished speakers who will touch on various elements of the safe system approach. But first, we'll hear from our keynote speaker, Melissa Wandel, who has been personally impacted by a traffic-related fatality and who has made it her life's mission to end traffic deaths. Her story has started a movement. As president of the National Coalition for Safer Roads, Melissa has set out to change highway safety and reduce the number of injuries and deaths caused by traffic collisions. The coalition's mission is to connect and empower survivor advocates of traffic-related tragedies with the tools and resources needed to take actions supporting an end to road violence. In addition to her commitment to the coalition's mission, Melissa is dedicated to facilitating support for children in grief. She's the founder and president of the Mark Model Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. The initial focus affords provisions and assistance to grieving children and teens who have lost a primary family member or guardian. Melissa is an active coalition member, spokesperson, and campaign ambassador for Alert Today Florida, an organization that works to implement Florida's bike, pedestrian and bicycle strategy safety plan. Please join me in welcoming Melissa Wandel to the podium. Thank you, Abby. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Great. Awesome. We're good to be here today, right? Um, I'm really excited to be a part of this day. Um, unfortunately, I'm only here for this morning and then I have to leave um, after I talk, so, but I'm here for the break, so if anybody wants to ask me any questions at that time, you know, please feel free to. Um, I want to thank Kim Smith and her colleagues at the um, Space Coast TPO for always believing in me and for always bringing me out to these meetings so that we can work together to educate, encourage, and empower other people to really make good, good choices out on our roadways because saving lives and getting to zero is our goal each and every day. Um, so I want to thank the SCTPO and Florida Department of Transportation, um, Lorraine and Steph, for having me here as well. It's grateful to, I'm grateful to be here today to share my story with you all. The value of sharing, educating, and collaborating on transportation issues awards us the opportunity like no other. It gives us a chance to improve and save human lives. Vision Zero is a strategy to eliminate all traffic fatalities and severe injuries while increasing safe, healthy, and equitable mobility for all. Each year, more than 40,000 people are senselessly killed on American roadways and thousands more are injured. We coin this, these tragic sufferings as accidents. But in reality, we have the power to prevent traffic crashes. As you're about to hear, it's my personal story that has led me to be the president of the National Coalition for Safer Roads and the campaign ambassador for Alert Today Florida. Opportunities such as today's meeting give me the opportunity to educate and empower others, encouraging us all to work beside each other so that we can reach the goal, the goal of achieving zero fatalities on our roadways. We all have our why that gets us out of bed each morning and motivates us throughout our day. If we remain focused on our why, collectively we will bring greater success and impact into our communities. So why am I here today? Today I'm here to represent the value of human life. Will you please play the video? We're in here. I just remember a lot of air rushing out of my chest. I remember taking a couple violent hits. I had blood running up down my ear a little bit, and I had taken some glass down my throat, but you don't feel any of that stuff. My first concern is, is you know, the person next to me, because I gotta get him home safe, and I was begging for a cell phone. I heard the phone ring, and I was on my way to get it, but it just seemed like apparently it was taking me a long time, and it only came home my answering machine that I was framing. and I just heard the urgency that I needed to pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, hurry, hurry, where are you, where are you, and I picked up the phone, and it was my brother. And I asked her to please get down here and do work, and I told her that Mark's not doing very well. So my, my brother just kept saying, come, 
please get down here, please come, please come, and I got to the corner, and there were just lights, and there were sirens. So, and I'm in there, I'm screaming, I'm pounding on the seat, I'm like, Mark, wake up, you can't be, no way, because a dog going, and I'll never forget, because this is something that only I will ever, ever hear. I just have yelled at him. I just hear a, oh, a last, a last breath. My motivational why is my husband's death and my brother's diminished quality of life is a crash survivor. There's no way I can summarize in just a shoot of a few short minutes how our entire lives changed. October 24th, 2003, the night my husband was killed and my brother was seriously injured. Yet I want to share some of the intimate details of that intersection and that crash because all of these crashes can alter all of our lives for a lifetime. When my husband and my brother decided to go get a quick bite to eat, we were nine months pregnant that day. And since I was just finishing up at work and I was gonna surprise my husband by telling him that I was no longer gonna go into work, but that I was gonna stay home from this point forward, um, I was gonna go out to eat with my brother and my husband and I had just made the decision being nine months pregnant that I just didn't feel well. And my, hus my brother, my husband said, but Melissa, I'm gonna miss you. And I said, well, I'll miss you too, but I'll see you in just a few, uh, a few short moments. And he said, I love you so much. And I said, I love you too. And then the next thing I get is the call from my brother. And when I entered that scene, I just remember that, like I said, there was lights and sirens all around me and the world just stopped. But as the world stopped, I had a peace within me that I will never be able to explain to anybody. I just remember that I had to protect this unborn baby because I was about to walk into the space that I wasn't going to come back out the same person. And I knew at that moment that this little girl that was growing inside me, that was supposed to be born any day, that her life had already changed and it had already altered. So I made the decision right there at that moment when they pronounced my husband. I was able to go over to him and talk to him, even though he had already passed. And I told him that our baby would be a happy baby and that she would be born into love and light and not negativity and tragedy. She would not be marked by that evening of October 24th of 2003. We would take what we had in this life and we would do everything that we can to prevent others from having to go through such tragedies. Two weeks later, Madison Grace Wanda was born. And when I held her in my arms, I made her the same promise. I told her that she wouldn't know her dad, but we physically, but we would find a way for her to know her dad through our causes. When I found out that our, the driver had run a red light, she had 10 points on her license, seven previous violations. Her last offense was for running a red light and being ticketed for it. We went to traffic court. She got a $500 fine in community service. She had her daughter with her, driving with her. Her daughter was five years old. Thank God was in a safety seat. Um, that was a horrific crash. Our state road was shut down for five hours. Eight people went to the hospital. One person went to the morgue. And I can, couldn't enough be able to tell her in that moment when we were in front of a judge who had no idea what to do with this case in the first place, to be able to say, I've never walked in your shoes, I don't know what your life has been, but I hope from this moment on that you will drive safely because you could have taken your own child's life that night. So moving forward, right away, she got community fines, $500 fine, and then her points were adjudicated. Um, the unfortunate thing is that I knew that I needed to do something. I knew that I needed to take something from that night and do something positive with it. And so um, I knew that going, trying to, I didn't want to put anybody in jail, but I wanted to curb the behaviors of red light running. Because once you run that light, once you break that safety law, there's no good for a victim or a violator. Everybody's lives are ruined at that point. And that's what most violators don't understand. 
when law enforcement is ticketing them for breaking a safety law, they're not doing it because they, it makes them feel good at the end of the day. They're doing it because they don't want to go out the next day and see the same person make the same error and kill somebody or kill themselves. Because at the end of the day, you never get that out of your head. And so I started researching red light safety cameras, why they work, how they work. You know, what can prevent red light running? Um, and I can't go into it today because we just don't have enough time in my story, but I was able to start learning about the red light safety cameras, how they work, where I, why they work around the country. I was able to get with representatives and senators across our state um, and able to just really truly start, you know, finding out how can, how can this bill, how can we um, remind people to stop on red again. And so it wasn't just about the red light safety cameras. Um, it's about the red light safety cameras working with law enforcement, engineering, education, advocacy. It's a combination of things at the end of the day. It's not one thing that's going to bring us to zero. So on May 13th, 2010, after five years of education and outreach, the Mark Waddle Traffic Safety Act, um, in my husband's name, which allows red light safety cameras at the most dangerous intersections in the state of Florida, passed. And then, of course, from 2011 to 2022, there's always a bill to try to repeal the Mark Wando Traffic Safety Act. But again, we have to remember, in a day when our crashes are up, in a day when people are making even um, worse decisions than they were, they were making 18 years ago when this crash happened, we shouldn't be taking safety tools away. We should be looking at what can we do more, not what can we do less. You know, there shouldn't be any politics and life-saving measures. We have to find a way, again, it's, it's automated enforcement, it's education, advocacy, it's engineering, um, and it is our policymakers. It's all of us working together at the end of the day that will get us to zero. So my daughter will never know what it's like to have a dad. Today, this means so many things and carries heavy emotions. My daughter is currently a senior in high school, and her next milestone is graduating. She will not have her father in an audience, reflecting pride and joy in his eyes. A red light runner ended that dream of hers. One day, my daughter <coughs> hopes to get married. Her dad will not, not be there to walk her down the aisle towards her future husband. This crash was preventable. This year, my little baby, who was born just two weeks after this crash, will leave for college. My home will be eerily quiet, quiet, once again, I will be on my own to navigate my emotions. My husband is not here because a red light runner killed him. Did this crash leave hope in his wake? Absolutely, through our Madison Grace. Did this crash save many other lives? Yes, it continues to do so through the Marguano Traffic Safety Act. Did this crash create optimism, optimism <coughs> for others who are grieving? Yes, through the Mark Wando Foundation, which provides grieving services to children, teens, and young adults in the state of Florida. For the past 17 years, I've continued to love my husband through my advocacy and through my philanthropy, even though he's not here to physically feel my love. The crash that killed my husband was preventable, and in turn, so can be the deep and painful heartache I experience every morning when I wake up. I miss my husband, but I truly mourn the life I never, we never experienced together. The absence of family vacations, the option for additional children, sharing mornings and coffee together, praying together, and navigating life circumstances as a team, and witnessing the interaction between daughter and daddy. I always dreamed this is what my family would look like. What about the other families? In Florida in 2020, over 3,000 people died on our roadways and more than 15,000 were seriously injured. Those numbers are staggering and those numbers are preventable. If you magnify my immediate family, you will see my parents are broken, my in-laws are broken, and sadly, my brother is broken in half. He will never be the same. He's emotionally debilitated, he's detached, he struggled with opioid addiction since this crash. He's 49 years old. <clears throat> he cannot work and he walks with a cane. His life has been destroyed by his own demons and by that crash that evening. This crash was not his fault. In 2020, we had over 2.7 million people injured in crashes in this country. 
Imagine even a quarter of that 2.7 million people walking around just like my brother, because they are. For my daughter, I decided to utilize the crash that killed Mark as the motivation for my advocacy and my philanthropy. <clears throat> and to highlight how a passionate why can make a positive impact, and you can help me. Collectively, we are all trying to improve and save human lives. We must stop this insatiable heartache. We've been making strides along the way, but we can do more, and we must do more. Roadway tragedy does not discriminate. It is time for us to take our roadways back. When the work feels hard, remember, the hard part is living without the one that you need the most, which can change for any of us in less than a second. My husband and I loved big, and we loved deep. I have no regrets at all. The only regret that I have is that we didn't have more time. And if I had no regrets in my marriage, I will not have any regrets in the aftermath of this crash. I will continue to move forward and find a way to stop this unnecessary tragedy on our roadways. I'm counting on you to work with me to educate, encourage, and empower others with Vision Zero's best practices in order to save human lives, both physically and emotionally. We can all do what we do best in this industry and collectively work together to drive down heartache on our roadways. The only thing we have to lose is another human life. And I, for one, I'm not willing to take that risk. Our families, our friends, our colleagues, everybody in this room, we're all worth it. My why and your why may be fundamentally different, but resiliency, consistency, and focus are all common threads in the work that we do. Regardless of your job title, if you stay motivated by your personal why, we can move towards zero deaths on our roadways. SCTPO's mission is global, and it is to develop and foster realization of regional multimodal projects and programs that improve the quality of life for Brevard residents, businesses, and visitors. FDOT's mission is statewide, and it is to provide a safe transportation system that ensures the mobility of people and goods, enhances economic prosperity, and preserves the quality of our environment and communities. United, locally, statewide, and nationally, we can move towards zero deaths on our roadways through leadership, partnership, and advocacy, and lives will be saved. Close your eyes with me for a moment and imagine a world where nobody has to die on our roadways. We can all make that a reality. This is what this symposium is all about. The Safe Systems approach is to eliminate fatal and serious injuries for all road, user, all road users. Zero is our goal. Remember your why and use it as a springboard for positive change. Yes, we absolutely have challenging work to do, but prevention is more manageable than picking up the pieces after tragedy occurs. You are appreciated and I am truly grateful for your time today. Thank you for letting me share your, my story. Thank you. Okay. So that really, the value of the human life is truly, you know, my, my reason for being here today. Um, but I also am going to work with Kim Smith today and show you a PowerPoint on building Florida's Vision Zero network. Um, since my husband was killed, you know, I really immersed myself um, in this business and I work every day to learn um, from you all. Like, I need to learn from you all every day because I got in it, you know, my, you know my motivation for getting in it. Um, but I've stayed in it, I've resourced myself, I continue to work with people so that we can um, really see what Vision Zero is um, and how what the importance is of implementing this plan in your community. So, okay, so what is, what is Target Zero? Target Zero is Florida's safety vision of eliminating all transportation-related fatalities and serious injuries for all, modes of, um, for all modes of travel. Target Zero provides a framework for Florida's traffic safety partners to move the needle towards a fatality-free transportation system through a safe systems approach. So there's all different kinds of, we hear, so we hear target zero, we have vision zero, towards zero deaths, road to zero coalition. They all mean the same thing. 
no matter what it's called, the goal is no serious injuries and zero fatalities on our roadways. So a safe systems approach, that's why we're here today. We're here to learn all about the safe systems approach, safe roads, safe speeds, safe roads user, safe road users, safe vehicles, post crash care. You're gonna get to hear, I'm not gonna even go through this because what I have to share with you is nothing compared to what this conference is about today. You're gonna have the most amazing people that'll come up here and share what the safe systems approach is. Um, but we must remember that the zero is the goal and the safe systems approach is the way to get to zero. So traffic fatalities, they're preventable, right? Um, my brother did not have to die, right? And I might, excuse me, my husband did not have to die and my brother does not have to be out of commission due to his life circumstances. Um, we have, there's a site, it's called drivingdownheartache.org. If you go on drivingdownheartache.org, um, what I've done is collected stories of people just like me, families just like me um, in the state of Florida that have lost their loved ones to um, any, any mode um, on our, whether it's a pedestrian, a bicyclist, it doesn't matter how they got there, the fact is they lost, the, they lost their lives. And so it's a beautiful website that shares the value of who these people were in this life and the value of getting to zero so that we can stop the sensational heartache and stop having to um, tell these stories. Because that's the one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to keep sharing these stories. We want these stories to end. So you can go to drivingdownheartache.org to be able to um, truly see um, these, a lot of these stories. <laughs> And then we also talked about the, the um, World Day of Remembrance. That was, it's another way, it's in November. And that's another way to honor all of these lives lost. Um, Kim did a, such an amazing job in the Space Coast, did an amazing, amazing job um, of honoring everybody on that, on that day. Um, and so again, we wanna make sure that that's not what we're doing. Um, our roadside markers, um, they're a reminder our roadside markers, when we see our roadside markers, it's a reminder to people that somebody lost their lives right there on our Florida roadways and that we need to honor that and we need to remember and come back. We are multitasking in our vehicles and it's not always our cell phones, it's our minds. It's everything we have on our minds. Sometimes we don't know how we get from point A to point Z, but if we see these roadside markers, it's a reminder that somebody had to lose their lives uh, life on our roadways and I know it inspires me every day continue to continue doing more I drove from Bradenton to here and the the road is littered with roadside markers and it's beautiful that we get to have these roadside markers but at the same time it's a shame that people have to die on our roadways so we just want to remember that crash survivors like my brother are left with physical, emotional, and financial hardships, and we want to curb those behaviors. So good people are making bad choices. I always like to say that it's, it's never, like I said in my, in my talk, victims and violators. You know, it's, it's horrific on the victims, the violators. You know, they don't set out every day to make these poor, horrific decisions, but they're doing it. Their lives are altered as well. Um, my friend Renee Napier that I met um, probably 12 or 13 years ago, um, her daughter and her daughter's best friend um, were taken by a drunk driver, uh, which is Eric Smallridge. And um, he's an example of good people that make really bad decisions and alter their lives for a lifetime. And again, that's why he's an example of why law enforcement tickets, right? They're trying to get them to understand the value of, you know what, you took a ticket this time, but if you're not careful, next time you could take a life, right? He's a prime example. Road users overestimate their abilities. Those seriously injured or killed are not the only victims of traffic crashes. We, oft we often consider the victims family, friends, and coworker, but let's serve as a reminder that the driver is a victim of their own choice, right? In fact, Let's hear from Eric Smallridge himself. 
Yeah, I'm sure. Who's gonna kill it? You know, but I'm very careful, so I, I, I'm not gonna be the one that hurts anybody. No one kills anybody. Of course not. You know, it can't happen to me. My name is Eric Smallridge, or I guess I should say I was. I'm now MH 222679. On May 11, 2002, I made the worst decision in my life. I chose to drink and drive. It wasn't like a night of all out partying by any means. You know, it was like next thing you know, it was 2 o'clock in the morning and the bars were about to close and it was time to go. So uh, got on the road. They read the guilty verdict. I knew I was guilty, and that's the point where I started to accept. So, so Eric um, served 20 years in prison, 20 years as a young man in prison. Um, his, his, um, my friend Renee takes that car that her daughter and best friend were killed in around to schools all around the state of Florida. She's one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. She took him and she speaks with him. So she forgave him and really truly embraced that crash and utilized that crash as an education piece for many teens in the state of Florida. And I can't even imagine the lives that she saved and the lives that he has saved, even though he took those two lives. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty amazing and that he's out on probation um, and they continue to uh, to travel around the state of Florida talking to high schools. So now I'm going to turn it over to Kim Smith. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, one of the things about Vision Zero is it, it talks about being equity-based. And we hear equity, equality, and we hear, we hear those words all the time now. They mean different things in different scenarios, and it's, it's always kind of hard to understand what it means. What does it mean to traffic? This was the kind of graphic that kind of made me get it. So I wanted to share it with you today. You can give everybody a bicycle and you're being equal. Everybody's getting the same thing. But if you give everybody a bicycle that works for them, if you give the handicapped person a recumbent type bike, the kid gets a smaller bike, then you've reached equity. You've given them the tools that they need to succeed. So if you're building roadways, how does, how does that correlate? If you're in a community where you have a lot of one car households or no car households, you need to consider your transit, your more sidewalks, pedestrian facilities, and that kind of thing. Maybe you can click the back. Oh, I should be clicking for you. All right, so the um, TPO we did adopt Vision Zero back in July of 2020. Man, it's hard for me to say that long ago now. Um, and these are just some of the things that, that you need to have to actually get a successful plan up and running and having it be effective. You have to have buy-in. We've heard that a lot. Georgiana talked about it in her opening comments about how you have to have leadership. We need the elected officials. We need the community leaders. Everybody has a part to play in this. You need to plan for safer roads, safer speeds. We're learning more about that today. Equity-based education, it goes back to look at your crash data. Um, and as you see here too, Vision Zero is, is data-driven. That's what it's, what it's all about. Where are our crashes? Where are our worst crashes happening? How do we need to educate? How do we need to design to get there? Mm -hmm. And be transparent in your decisions. If you make a decision mm -hmm. about where to put a roadway, you need to be able to come back and show anybody that asks why you made that decision. Um, as you're putting together an action plan, these are just some of the suggestions of folks to have on your team. Think about um, here, here in Brevard County, we have Lockheed and Harris and, and the, the, space, the space program that that employ a lot of people. So you want to look at having those big organizations. One of I know that they were going to be in the room today, they're not. One of the kind of unlikely but very good partners that we've had through our Vision Zero process has been the Vieira Company. Vieira Company is designed
designing their own rope, you know, and they're, they're putting stuff in. So they were a great one to have in. They've come out to our outreach. So think about um, some of these groups and who you would need to have on your, your task force as you're building your plan. And you want to make sure that you get the users too. You know, find bike clubs and walking clubs and things like that. This is just kind of a timeline of what it takes to, to build a Vision Zero plan. Uh, it takes about a, a year kind of from when you adopt that goal of zero till you get to, to a finalized plan. I think it took us quite at that. I think we were a couple, couple months shy of that, but you can plan on, on about a year because you want to work through the with the task force and, and really make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do. Alright, so the state of Florida tracks emphasis areas. This helps us out. It shows us where our crashes, crashes are, are happening. And they also track um, these, the ones on the bottom are emphasis areas that are kind of related to the top emphasis areas in the, in the um, state. And you can go out and you find an awful lot of resources to help you with whatever the current emphasis areas are. They do change from time to time as the crash data changes. And talking about resources, um, you have materials in front of you today from Alert Today Florida. Clive Scott and Melissa is one of their ambassadors there. They have all kinds of great, great resources. Um, you're going to see some of them at lunch for bicyclists and pedestrians. But on top of that, we also have Safe Mobility for Life, which targets our older road users, and that's obviously very important here in Florida. You have Occupant Protection, which deals with seatbelt usage. You have the Impaired Driving Coalition, uh, TRCC, which are the folks that work on what kind of data do we need, what do we need to be looking at, Team Safe Driver Coalition, and Ride Smart Florida, which um, targets motorcycles, which is also another area that we need to continue to look at. Back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Kim. Um, so why not Vision Zero? Why not? Look at the, again, it's, you know, we can see the, the, the 2020 crash data on the screen, over 15,000, seriously, 15,000 killed and over um, 3,000 that died on our roadways. And so, did you also know that um, over 40,000 people die a year in car crashes? The U.S. ranks 41 of 49 among high-income countries and the worst capita for deaths. Um, while these numbers are staggering, what we must remember is every one of these crashes, are they are not statistics, they are human beings. They are our families, they are our friends, they are our colleagues. They're losing their lives every day on our roadways. <clears throat> And so for far too long, injuries and fatalities have been an acceptable part of life. Still even today, you know, when somebody's like, oh yeah, it's just a crash, when they hear things on the interstate, they're like, oh, I'm stuck, I'm stuck for a couple of hours on the interstate because, oh, it's just another crash. You know, we, we act like it's just something that we pick up and we throw away and we forget about it. And then we move on to the next person that's killed. And really, that's the mentality. Everybody, accept, everybody expects people to die every day on our roadways. And that's so, we have got to get a part of it, away from that. These serious injuries and fatal crashes are preventable if we all work together and we all intimate, implement a plan that's feasible for all of us. <clears throat> One of the things we have to remember, too, is that um, with Vision Zero, like, is the goal ambitious? Yes. Do opinions vary on approaches? Absolutely. Will there be give and take? Absolutely. Will it be stress-free? Absolutely not. And will it go as scheduled? No. But we have to remember that we are here to protect and save human lives. Um, okay, we're going to play one more vid uh, video on why achieving zero fatalities is important. Did you know in Florida, an average of 800 pedestrians and bicyclists are fatally injured in traffic crashes every year? What do you think is a more acceptable number? Acceptable? Uh, maybe 50? <laughs> okay, this is what 50 people look like. Oh, that's my family, my friends. So now, what do you think is a more acceptable number? Zero. 
And that's what's important. It's getting into the real people and getting them to understand that that is their family and friends. When they're in their vehicles making those decisions, it's their families and friends that could be in that next vehicle. It's their family and friends that could be walking you know, in that sidewalk. It's their family and friends that could be just taking that bike ride that they end. So, you know, and, and unfortunately, he, uh, he doesn't get it until he sees in his face that they could be his family and friends. The reality is the next crash could be our friends or our loved ones. We must change what we think. Every single person is important to someone. Earlier, I asked the question just a few minutes ago, is the, is the Vision Zero goal ambitious? Are there different opinions on how we can get there? Will we have to compromise? Here are the important questions that we should really be asking ourselves. Can we honestly say that even having one person lose their lives on our roadway, even if we do not know them, that is acceptable, right? Are we willing to work together to affect real change? <laughs> Every day we have choices. We have choices to end a life. We have choices to save a life. The part, the, the choice to be a part of the solution or the part to just turn away a bit and think that it's somebody else's problem. I, for one, want to be a part of the solution. And I strive every day to work with each and every one of you to make sure that we can resource each other so at the end of the day, we can drive down insatiable heartache and save lives. Thank you so much for your time today. I truly appreciate you. for Melissa, but before we do that, I know that she's going to run off after the break, so I want to thank her for being here today. Um, Drew, we've worked together for the past several years, um, and she's been so supportive of our Vision Zero efforts here in Faso CP CPO, and she's added so much to our program. So thank you. Um, it was truly my honor to present with you today, um, somebody that I admire their work, and I've lucky enough to call a friend now. So thank you for, for being here and letting me present with you. Abs awesome. No, absolutely, thank you. The honor's all mine. And again, you know, I learn every day. I learn how to do PowerPoints. I learn how to, you know, uh, every day it's about, it's not just about my heart. It's, it's having that articulate knowledge along with the compassion uh, to do what I do and the passion that drives me every single solitary day but I know that I need articulate knowledge, and I've gained a lot of that through Kim and, and the colleagues and, ST, and, and the Space Coast. So um, I'm grateful to be here today, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? And if I don't know the answer, Kim will know. <laughs> All right, Pete. I'd just like to thank you for the cone eyes on your stuff on red <laughs> every year. We appreciate it. You're you're very welcome. Yes, I get. I'm very. I feel grateful that I get to um, come here, and uh, Space Coast allows me to come down here for you know to school bus safety, for stop on red. Um, we're going to do a bike month, uh, bike rodeo here in March. So it's an honor. And he's and his children are one of our amazing um, volunteers. They come. The little his grandchildren. Come and uh, volunteer, and we love it so much. You know, I have a heartbeat, and you may not be able to answer this, <laughs> but if you're driving around, I'm seeing less and less enforcement, and I know part of that is that uh, the law enforcement agencies have a hiring problem right now, and without enforcement, it's kind of tough to implement some of the policies, and it kind of seems to be your area. Do you know if there's any effort being made where more enforcement be, it can be put out there to help make the real erosion a little bit safer? Yeah, that's not a question for me. For me, um, yeah. for me, I will tell you one thing. I, I don't. I when it comes time to law enforcement, and I'm not going to answer this correctly in the way you want me to answer it. Somebody else can, but there's never going to be enough law enforcement for what's happening on our roadways, or happening in our streets, happening in our homes. I think. So I can't speak for law enforcement at all and, and what they can do, but I, but I think that we've always had a shortage because of everything that's happening okay. with well, people everywhere. I apologize for mm -hmm. using you to get there. Oh, it's okay, it's well, okay, it's okay. Th there is, there, do you want to talk about Tallahassee? I 
I mean, that's a piece of legislation that's talking about adding automated enforcement to us. Well, yeah, so in our school zones, we are trying to, um, it's not, it's, it's aiding law enforcement, so it's speed enforcement, and it, right now there's a bill um, in the Senate that's actually going through the Senate well, we're just not sure how well it'll go through the, um, the House, but it's for speed cameras in school zones, um, which is incredible, and, and our Senate is really, um, they've been beautiful, they, they believe in it, and it's, we need Unfortunately, we have a speed problem in our school zones and automated enforcement does help curb that behavior. So we are currently working that, but that's a tool to aid law enforcement. I think it would be a stepping stone. That, mm -hmm. you know, that works well when maybe they look at it in, in, other, in other areas. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. We're letting y'all do the email. <laughs> All right. Thank so, you. Thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing your story and all that.